Is Meghan Markle Harry's wife or his mother? Because sometimes it's really hard to tell the difference between the two because she very much mothers him. We see this most recently in their appearance at a charity event in Santa Barbara where she's literally picking up an award and handing it to him so he can walk another two steps and give this award to Kevin Costner. Now what's so interesting about this interaction is just like this very mothering gestures that she has towards him. She doesn't treat him as if he's her husband or that he is an independent person. No, she treats him as if he is a clueless child that she has to direct to do things. And if you watch the interaction, I just don't even think Harry seems all that engaged. And I know some of this comes from Harry obviously losing his mother, but I wonder if the mothering gestures initially that Harry found rather attractive have really begun to annoy him as time goes on. Because it's one thing sure to put your arm on your spouse or to maybe, you know, kind of move them along or something like that. We see Catherine and William do that from time to time, but this is totally different. She is like direct him. And then we also have, of course, our infamous polo incident where she's literally wiping lipstick off his mouth as if he's five years old. And so today we're going to talk about Megan and Harry's PDA. And is Megan trying to be his mother or his wife? Because I'm not sure. And I'd love to get your thoughts. But if you guys haven't been to Royal News Network, my name is Brittany and I provide compelling royal commentary about the latest news, sometimes a little bit of the gossip going on behind the scenes. So if you guys are interested in more, feel free to hit that subscribe button. I also have a newsletter fashion channel, which I just uploaded a video on Meghan Markle's Invictus Games looks. I also have one I'm going to do on the Swedes and I'm going to do a best and worst look this week. And so if you guys are interested in any of that, feel free to hit that subscribe button. I also have a membership where I've been doing some vlogs behind the scenes, sharing some behind the scenes pictures and everything. So if you guys are interested in that, again, link is down below and it's an opportunity for you to get some more live streams, some special videos, interactions, those sorts of things. So if you guys are interested in any of that, again, I'd love to see you there as well. But let's get on to Harry and Meghan's PDA. I know there's other royal news going on, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. And I'm trying to get through a bunch of stuff. So maybe we'll do some shorts about the other royal news going on. But I wanted to talk about Harry and Meghan's PDA because we have this latest incident in Santa Barbara. And Oh my gosh, is it weird and awkward. It's just so strange because the way Meghan Markle acts around Harry, as if he is a clueless, rather dim child that she has to direct to go different places because she's constantly directing him. We've seen this all throughout their marriage. And yes, at certain points, yeah, maybe Harry is confused from time to time, but there's a lot of incidents too where it's like, he's the royal, this is his world, and you are directing him in his own world, in his own role. It's very, very strange. And so let's look at the latest one. And this is from a charity event over in Santa Barbara. It's part of Kevin Costner's event. And in this clip, Meghan Markle is picking up this award, giving it to Harry so he can walk two other steps and give it to Kevin Costner. Number one, Meghan didn't have to do any of that. She could have just stood there and had Harry pick it up and walk over and give it to Kevin Costner. Her, her act of giving it to him, number one, it infantilizes him. It infantilizes him because she has to pick it up and she has to give it to him. So it seems like either he can't do it, he doesn't want to do it. And it also pulls to attention to herself because she didn't need to do any of that. If you are a self-assured adult, why do you need somebody else to pick up an award for you if you're going to walk two paces and give it to somebody else? That's a very, very simple, should be a very, very simple gesture. But that Megan all of a sudden makes it this thing where he has to interact with her in order to give it to Kevin Costner. It pulls attention to her and it also, at the same time, also infantilizes Harry. And then if you watch a click, click. <laughs> if you watch the clip, it's clear too that Harry is just kind of like, yeah, yeah. And he gives it to Kevin Costner, who doesn't even acknowledge the two of them basically, and then gives his speech, which is really, really funny because they're there, you could say, always to bring attention to themselves. And yet the guy who should put perhaps more attention on them just completely ignores them. And so I find that really, really hysterical. But at the same time too, I feel sorry for Harry. I just feel like this guy doesn't know what to do anymore because he has to appease his wife in certain ways. And a lot of this is through PDA. When I watch through a lot of the Invictus Games incidents and everything and all the pictures and stuff, 
The PDA, even more now than it ever has, seems very, very performative. It's something that they have to do. It's something that they have to do. Harry has to play this PDA game with Meghan anytime they're together in public. And so they're constantly holding hands. They're constantly having to touch each other. It just gets weird. And Megan too, you see this, she even mothers, you could say, other people. Because I was watching some of these clips as well, and she would constantly have to touch people, forcing intimacy in a lot of ways. It's like, if I don't really know you, do I really want you touching me? Probably not, especially if like I didn't ask you to. So you could say, for example, I did have a selfie with Catherine la earlier this year. It seems so long ago, but it was just earlier this year. And when it came to the selfie, of course, I made sure not to touch her because obviously not only is she a royal, but she's an individual person. If she wants to, she's the, she's the person I'm trying to interact with. So I'm not gonna, going to initiate contact with her, like physical contact unless she offers it. But apparently when we did do the selfie, I think she did put her hand on my arm, which was very, very sweet, but I didn't ask her to do that. I didn't force her to do that. I didn't do that girl where like harangued over Catherine's neck. Because again, there's this balance between interacting with somebody. But Meghan Markle, sometimes these people aren't asking to interact with her. She's walking up the stairs and she has to rub somebody's arm. And I'm like, does you, do you really have to do that? And she constantly seems to want to be seen hugging everyone. And yes, certain instances, yes, you would hug somebody, but also seems again, forcing it rather than letting it happen naturally. And so that's just overall what I saw with obviously the Invictus game stuff, but with Harry and Meghan again, it was the constant touching, the constant hand holding. It just seemed more and more performative. And there were just instances where a lot of times Harry just didn't look that engaged. Yes, there are pictures where he does, 100%. But there's a lot more when I was looking through him that he just looked grumpy. And I think it's because, is yes, he appreciated Megan's tactileness when they first got together. He appreciated her seemingly mothering aspect because he lost his mother when he was young. So he's like, oh, okay, I like this. This is good. This is great. But now as time has gone on, I think it's wearing increasingly thin on him because I think he wants to assert himself. He wants to lead this and he can't lead the Invictus games anymore because when she's there, he has to put all his attention on her and he can't lead it anymore. They can't even go to separate events, really. The whole time she was there at the Invictus games, they always went to the same events, sat together and everything. This woman is so insecure that she can't go and do her own event at the Invictus games. She always has to do it with him. And to me, if you are hosting an event, doesn't it make a lot more sense for you guys to go to separate events, to spread yourselves around more so you can be more welcoming to people? But no, Meghan Markle had to constantly be with Harry. And I felt like the PDA was even more excessive, I think in part because there's so many rumors that their marriage is not necessarily in a good place. And that doesn't surprise anyone. These two people have nothing in common. Actually, I think I want to do a whole video looking at the Sophie Turner, Joe Jonas divorce, because that could be Harry and Meghan's future. That could be definitely Harry and Meghan's future before too long. Because I imagine that their marriage, when they break up, it's not going to go well for either of them. And I think definitely for sure, Meghan Markle will use everything that Harry put in his book to kind of hammer against him in the court proceedings. And if he wants to bring the kids to UK, I don't know if he'll be able to. I don't know if she'll let him bring the kids to the UK. It'll just be so interesting and yet at the same time so sad to see where this all goes in the future. But I think because of the rumors and the rumors were good. You know, we had the telegraph, we had a lot of mainstream publications, even the people magazine piece about them seemed to highlight. And this is one that Harry and Meghan gave to people magazine. This story seemed to highlight their separateness, that they are going in different directions. Their careers are going in different directions. They're no longer salt and pepper. So all of a sudden at the Invictus games event, all of a sudden we have to be salt and pepper. We have to be there together all the time, every day, holding each other, holding hands, being together. And even in the, some of the concert bits, you know, you saw Meghan Markle's, again, her kind of manic. I think as things get worse, she kind of gets more manic and excited about different things just to continue to push her narrative. Because we saw this a bit in her interaction with the, I guess it was the Nigerian Invictus game scenes, because she's like, I love you, I love you. And it's like, okay, Meghan, you've met 
like these people once. You've never even been to Nigeria, never even tried to go to Nigeria as far as I'm aware. Yes, you might be part Nigerian, but you're not like getting on a plane and immediately flying over there and trying to connect. It just seems like more of a stunt than anything. And that's, I mean, the whole Invictus Games, at least from the Meghan Markle standpoint, seem like a giant publicity stunt with the fashion, with the actions, with, you know, trying once again to sell that her and Harry are in love. If people who are really in love and truly in love don't need to sell it because they experience it. So why do they need to sell it to other people? They know it. They don't have to perform it. They don't have to be performant about it. They're, they're it. They're it. That's all there is. They're just not, doesn't need to be anything else. So Harry and Meghan's very performative aspect, I think just highlights how much in a bad place they are in their relationship. When it comes to the mothering aspect of Meghan Markle towards Harry, this has been a long time. So we saw this as well in the in polo game that Harry played in where it was like a charity event. They did some sort of English theme. So it was like riffing off polo in England. So there were hats, I mean, like a pretty woman theme. It was just sort of ridiculous and very kitschy and very obviously trying to poke fun at Harry's connections to the UK while not at the same time. It was very weird, but at the end, Harry and his team, well, they win. I think they win. I can't remember now, but anyway, so they're on this dais and she goes and she gives, you know, some of the guys a hug. And then of course she has to kiss Harry on the lips because this is always the thing with Megan too. She must kiss Harry on the lips. She can't do a side kiss or anything. No, no, it has to be full on on the lips. And then she walks to the side and she looks and she realizes she got some lipstick on him and she goes and she does like this gesture, like licks her finger and does that to get it off him. And I'm like, D doesn't a mother do that to her five-year-old? Doesn't a great grandma do that to maybe the grandchild like I, I feel like I feel this I see this scene in movies maybe it was in Christmas vacation or something where the grandma does the kiss and she's like oh oh sorry honey and she's you know she's getting it off his face that's what a grandmother does somebody who is older and obviously Megan is older than Harry but it's like it's just a very very old person gesture a very like cringeworthy gesture that we've seen replicated in movies a thousand times. And there's a way to do that and maybe is subtle. There was actually a really cute bit in an interview Princess Madeline did with her husband, Christopher O'Neill. They were on the show. It was in English. Actually, Adele was there for some reason. And Chris's hair, you can see it even when I was in Sweden. He, he has kind of longish hair, and so it tends to flop in his face a lot. And they're in this interview thing. And she at one point she goes, and, you know, she's not going over there and, and combing his hair back like Meghan Markle would. She's just kind of looking at me. And the, the, the camera did catch it, but it was just trying to be very subtle and trying to let him know without like in, inter, interfering in his public space. But no, 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 Meghan, instead of going, hey, you know, a little bit. Uh, she's like, you know, instead of going, oh, I got a little lipstick on you right here. He has, she has to wipe it off as if she's his mother. And then they have this whole thing with the, the trophy ceremony. And she's like trying to be in the center of it. She's trying to grab this trophy away from this kid and the kid's like pulling it back going, no, this is my trophy, you crazy lady. It's my trophy, I'm not giving it to you. And so they like hold it over and she, you know, she's in her hat and she's gotta, you know, be the center of attention. And this, again, mothering aspect even goes back to when they were royals. I remember in particular, the scene where they're in Ireland and they're on this Ireland visit. And Ireland visit, if you don't know, with the, the dark history between the UK and Ireland, these are very sensitive things. These are very complicated things. Like visiting Ireland is a very big deal for the UK, especially Northern Ireland with the troubles and everything. And so this is a very tender political situation. And they walk up into this room. And of course, number one, Megan walks in first, which she should not do because she's not the blood royal. She's not the reason they're there. The reason they're there is because of Prince Harry, not her. And so she always should be walking behind her husband but then she goes up and she stands there and they have this book for them to sign and she's like gesturing for him to go over and like oh yeah honey do it right there and it's just so so overbearing and overwhelming that I just almost feel a bit sorry for Harry in this way but I think Megan again she needs this tactileness and she needs to mother him and I think this is a dynamic to a certain extent she set up because remember Harry was very, very convinced, I don't think he is so much anymore, but very convinced at the beginning that Meghan Markle was basically the reincarnation of Diana. And he was telling all his family and friends that, hey, she's just like Diana. Oh, she's so much like Diana. And I think they were all standing there back there going, no, but no, she's, she's really not. She, she's nothing like your mother. And, or they were thinking, well, mm, 
she's kind of, but like in the worst way possible. Like, I don't think Harry quite understood that some of the aspects that Megan exhibited that were like his mother exemplified some of her worst qualities, like her toxicity and everything. Because Diana, she had spats with people. She cut people out of her life. You know, there were a lot of different things. And yes, maybe it's not appropriate to go into it, but I think it is important to be accurate about people and reflecting them and not just sanctify them because I don't think that really serves a good purpose. And so Harry was, I think, convinced that she was his mother. So the more mothering she was to him, the more attractive she was to him because this is a woman, again, who wore his mother's perfume. She, I think, faked charity trips. I don't think Megan cared about Africa or doing any of the things charitable that she really did. She just wanted the attention for it. And so he was attracted to this mothering aspect of her personality that he saw, the way she mothered him because he lost his mother. He has this mother wound. So the more she acted like that, the more attractive she was in a way. But the thing about that is because in part it's it's fake and it's demeaning at some point, it was always going to rub him the wrong way. And at some point, it was going to get annoying because, yes, you miss your mother. You want your mother to be back. You want that feeling of what a mother is like. But at the same time, that person should not be your wife. Your wife is not there to be your mother. Your wife is there to be your wife. Totally different dynamics and relationships. And I think once that spell was somewhat broken, then it becomes more annoying the more Meghan Markle has to desperately cling to him. And her clinging to him is sort of desperate because again, she has created this veneer in this relationship that I think is in a lot of ways made up of smoke and mirrors. And that yes, they had this dynamic love and everything and that they were so into each other. But as time has gone on, I think that's totally and completely faded. And as their business ventures continue to fail and they got bills piling up, nobody's investing in them. I mean, again, Meghan Markle archetypes was basically a flop. And so Spotify cut them loose. <laughs> She's still desperately trying to find an audience for archetypes. But Essentially, the reports are now is that she's had to get up with the fight because she can't get the trademark for it because it's too generic of a name and not interesting enough. And nobody's biting. If archetypes was that good, if people were that invested in Meghan Markle and continuing archetypes, somebody would have picked her up very, very quickly after Spotify dropped them because that has happened. Like Last Man Standing was picked up, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Those are two shows that were canceled by one network and picked up by another. And because of that, they were able to continue because they had an audience. Archetypes doesn't have an audience. It didn't have an audience. It had curiosity seekers, but once their curiosity was satisfied, they moved on. And I think that's what's starting to happen with Harry and Meghan's relationship as well. He, She was very attractive to him in the beginning. And I think to a certain extent, he is still attracted to her. But as time has gone on, as things continue to fail, as their business prospects continue to dry up, as the bills are piling up, as they have this massive house, and they have this very, very public platform of failure, things aren't going well. And then you have Meghan Markle coming into the Invictus Games, making it all about herself, diminishing her husband in return. And yes, sometimes she acts like so proud of him, but it just also just screams so fake. Like there was this one bit where she's clapping at him and looking at him at the Invictus Games. And I'm like, oh honey, stop the act. We all know you don't care about this or him in this situation. You want to be here because you want to show off your fashion because that's all you did is give us a giant fashion show because you're preparing to relaunch your influencer career. Because yes, the peak of success is going from influencer to royalty, then back down to influencer with a smidge of royalty built in there. Yeah, that's, that's what successful people do. That's what successful people with talent, that's what they do. <laughs> yeah, can't, can't help but shove that in a little bit more. So it'll be interesting to see how Megan and Harry's relationship goes forward, but I really think the shine is wearing off, that problems are really starting to arise, and that Meghan Markle's insistence on trying to get Harry's attention as much as possible and really trying to force herself even more into the Invictus Games is an aspect of their continually flopping brand and desperately trying to cling to anything that can bring him back to the forefront. But I think Megan, if she has any desire to continue her relationship with Harry, no idea if she wants to or not. She needs to stop mothering him though. Let him be a man. You don't need to direct him. He's not five. He's 39. Let him be a 35 year old man. Let him lead the relationship. And I think now that I'm talking about in processing, I think too, what, and this is a dynamic between men and women is that at some point, 
He wants to lead, I think, and she won't let him lead. They have to do everything according to her because they even said that in the People Magazine article, she rules the roost. And for men, they do want to lead. They have this natural inclination to lead. And I think the more she clamps down on that, the more she demands of him. Yes, at some points, he's like, yeah, okay, she can do what she wants. But at some point, that's not going to work anymore. And I think it's already starting to break their relationship. So it'll be fascinating to see where they go from here. But I just don't think Harry and Meghan have a strong future as a couple. But those are my opinions. What are yours? I'd love to hear from them. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think. Is Meghan trying to be a mother to Harry or is she trying to be his wife? Again, I'm still confused. So let me know, guys. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you again. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.